I mean, I literally would be doing this no matter what. If crypto came along or if it didn't, I, I was making art for 10 years before this. So if NFTs went away, I'm still gonna be making art. I bought this one of one and then I got an AT print of it. The color palette of that is the most like muted but vibrant at the same time. It's just got this like feeling to it, just oozing. You know, I started with the physical stuff. That's actually my, my real passion is physical art. And you know, it's been a crazy journey in the last three years, like primarily only doing digital. So this thing, like, it's sound activated. So if you have a beat going, goosh, 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 it changes with the sound. Pretty uh, rare little crypto kitties guy. This is one of my pre-crypto lenticular lineups. Like in CGI, can you make this look like really good and like crisp and like gilded? So I made this one for uh, Bitcoin 2020 show that got canceled. So, you know, we're all trying to make our cool shit to show and it never happened. So I made this huge Snowden. My buddy Roger, who I was collaborating with, he, he gave me all his comic books. So these are just all fucking comic books I need to get rid of. But the cool thing is, is like, I learned a lot about illustration from the seventies from just looking at these books, you know, it's just the style. This is like also early on inspirational stuff. So I, my, my parents had these. I don't know how the fuck they had these, but stereoscope. This is an old one too. So I'm like, I'll find one that actually works. The thing is they didn't know their lens distances back then. Look at the absurdity of this. Like some guy's lowering his buddy down on a fucking rope. <laughs> I just have a shit ton of those. This isn't even half of them, but I have like a lot of Viewmaster cards. I'm just gonna drive through this part here. <laughs> oh fuck, dude! I don't want to do this. <laughs> I have lifelong had anxiety issues. Growing up, I didn't know what it was. I was just like, you know, the, the weird kid. You know, it was very scary to talk, but at the same time, I could hide behind the art. And that's what started giving me like my own personal like value and like the ability to own what I was making. And that was a big breakthrough. That, and I still struggle with that to this day, like that's all the fucking time. All my art has a story. Yeah. I don't do non-story themed art pieces. The feedback from people who have a reaction to it yeah. and maybe they vibe with it and it makes a connection, yeah. dude, that's so much better than even like a portrait I do or um, you know something that's more obvious to tell what it is. The person um, taking a chance to step outside of themselves and get into the art and have a, that reaction yeah. of possibility. I feel like I'm more able to get into a flow state because I'm there's like the, the, the wiring's a little different in there. Yeah. And my comfort zone and my ease is the flow state. Yeah. Okay. And like that's why I only want to make art because I can hop into that flow state pretty quickly or when it hits me, it's real hard. That's really where like my brain is in its like equilibrium yeah. and it can just go. You know, I think you have to do a hundred things before you even have an idea of, of what you're doing. And, you know, I feel like I'm just figuring out where I'm going. And NFTs have really uh, given me an opportunity to get digital and really learn a whole lot of new stuff. And I mean, I'm really getting started. If this stuff goes away, it doesn't matter. Like I'm an artist to the bone and I'm gonna keep going forever. I mean, I'm really just getting started.